Episode Fifty Four: The Way of the Warrior Sage. Welcome to the Fatherhood as Leadership Podcast, where modern fathers answer the call to leadership, evolve as men, and build their legacy. Here's your host, Devin Banderson. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Fatherhood is Leadership podcast. This is your CFO, Chief Fatherhood Officer, Devin Banderson, coming live and direct from our studios in New York City, New York, to wherever you're joining us from. And as I always like to do, I'd like to thank all our listeners for tuning in, for leaving those ratings and reviews on iTunes. Because you guys tune in and leave those ratings and reviews, we're historically at the top of a few categories of the iTunes chart. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm especially excited for today's guest, Mr. Satyen Raja, who is the founder and president of Warrior Sage and is a living synthesis of Eastern wisdom and Western practicality, combining the power of the warrior and the wisdom of the sage. He's a lifetime black belt martial artist and a penetrating real visionary who compels his clients to harness their greatest obstacles and transform them into their most powerful gifts. If you're seeking real change, the path of the warrior sage, although not for the timid, is deep, fast, and razor effective. This level of spiritual practice is intense. You must be willing to go into the fire and grow your heart. Satyen offers this opportunity for transformation out of his passion to help you awaken, and he is the teacher for you. Only if you are seeking real change. What an intro. How are you doing today, my friend, Satyen? Hey, thank you so much for inviting me on today. And the one thing the bio didn't tell you is I'm also a father. So <laughs> I'm, I'm glad, and which has been my greatest, you know, one of my greatest journeys and still is one of my greatest journeys. And so thanks for inviting me on. We can jam about that, you know? Absolutely. Well, let's just start right there. Let's go into it. Why don't you tell us uh, a little bit about fatherhood with you and your family and things like that? Yeah, certainly. Well, you know, I come from an East Indian background, raised, born in Uganda, Africa, and then raised in Canada. And my wife, Suzanne, is Jamaican. And we met in high school. And, you know, she's Catholic, grew up Catholic. I grew up Hindu. So very different backgrounds. And then we fell in love, <laughs> madly in love after high school. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we've had a long relationship now, 29 years. And we had our first, we had our daughter uh, 19 years ago, her name is Satori, and our son, 17, whose name is Shaman. And I got, you know, I got to say, the one of the biggest things for me at that time, I was very dedicated to my business, my service as a, as a you know, uh, I guess an entrepreneur, a focused, uh, you know, I just had a very focused, go get it type of lifestyle mentality, right? Mm-hmm. And that was in conflict at times with being a father because the programming I got from my father was work your ass off nonstop, work, 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 work. And that's the way you love your your family, right? Right. And it just, in this day and age, I realized that I couldn't do the same, but I was getting into the same type of rut just by automaticity, by the imprints I had, right? Mm Mm-hmm. And so I had to make a big decision earlier on in life to say, hey, what's, what are we going to do about all this? And uh, we decided, Suzanne and I, that we're going to raise the, that she's going to, she wanted to. She, it's not because out of like a, um, how can I say, a default mechanism. It's not out of chauvinism or anything, but she wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. Mm. And so we chose that route. And it's been a very powerful, I guess there, as you've heard, as you know, my friend, they're our greatest teachers, greatest allies, and the children having children show you where your greatest faults and your greatest strengths are, you know? Absolutely. 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 So I, I, I want to thank you because, I mean, most of our listeners, Satyan, is are entrepreneurs or they're business owners or they're just guys, you know, working really hard um, and trying to integrate work life and family life. Uh, so I'm glad you addressed that because I think a lot of us try to figure it out along the way, right? We, you know, we grind out and we were taught, we were taught to be the breadwinners and sometimes miss the most important times uh, in our children's lives. So uh, it was good that you guys uh, try to figure something out early, right? Exactly, you know, yeah. and I didn't have it as a value, as a virtue. I mean, I had it in my mind, but now I really believe in this value and virtue. And what it is is equilibrium, 
balance. So our philosophy now is, is I like to make sure I divide my time and my priorities amongst family, faith, finance, and fitness. And having, and having fun in all of them, right? So I call them the freedoms, the freedoms. And I got to tell you, since I really took that on, and I, because I could work all day long, I've got that mindset, you know, uh, because I grew up in an entrepreneurial family. But paradoxically, I found that when I worked less, when I started disciplining myself not to be just in that habit of, of continuously working, then, and I had to learn to take my energy off because what happened was I would be working lots and then thinking, oh, I need to be with my family. I'm with my, I was with my family lots. You know, when I was with my family, I'm thinking, okay, I need to get this stuff, that stuff done, this complete. I mean, what type of life is that? That's divided, right? right. So the quality of attention, the quality of presence, the quality of being there wasn't there fully. So the, my advice to my fellow you know, fathers here, my brother fathers here is, you know, we got to learn to switch off. So when we're coming home, do some type of, this is the magic for me. I'll give you a direct thing that I do. Okay. Mm -hmm. When I come back from business or work or anything like that, I take the time, a half an hour, 45 minutes, whatever it is for myself, I unplug, go for a walk, go in nature, maybe work out. Something. I'll do something away from my wife, away from the kids, away from work, where I get to, you know, just walk or breathe, meditate. I, I change it up all the time. I don't have any specific thing. I just call it me time, decompression time, decompression, you know. And after I come out from the decompression time where I just get to go into my own man cave, then I can offer my full presence my undisturbed presence to my uh, children, you know, and my wife. And I got to tell you, since I adopted that mindset years ago, it makes, it just changed everything. My, my kids felt that when I'm there, dad's there. He's not only like a half there, he's fully there. And that quality of presence I found is the number one gift I can give my children, you know. Absolutely. The gift of your own attention. I mean, it's the old saying when you, I mean, it's the old analogy when you get on the plane and they say when the, when the oxygen masks come down, you have to put it over your mouth first before you can help someone else. You got to take the time to replenish yourself so you could show up more powerfully, right? Exactly. Yeah. Great stuff. So you said the four F's, right? Family, faith, finance, and future. And fitness. Fitness, fitness, fitness. Right. Okay. I love it. And you know, all with the all of them with fun. So I don't put fun as a separate F. I just right. make sure I'm doing all of the, those four that I add in lots of fun in all of it. Right? I keep right. that in the mindset. Right? So, so Satyam, what what's one of your strengths as a father? What would you say one of your biggest strengths are, is? Hmm. I would say one of my strengths are is I can stay in contact. I can stay in connection, which means, you know, especially when my kids were going through, you know, just entering the teen years where it started getting, you know, both my wife and I were high energy people. And so obviously our kids are going to be high energy and re rebellious and, and, you know, exploring their own direction. Right? right. So I guess one of my greatest strengths is that I'm willing to let them learn on their own and I'm willing to, how can I say, um, let them fall and get up. I have that, although it's nail biting at times, right? I'm willing to give them the opportunity to go out and take risks and let them fall, fall on their face. But I'm there to, to support them if they need, you know? Great stuff. And what about a weakness? If you had one thing that you've either need to improve on or have improved on over the years, what would it have been? Anger and frustration. Mm. You know, anger and frustration of, of when my, when they, you know, give their word around something and, or they're going to clean up something or finish off a task and they don't, then I used to get very angry and uh, upset and try to hold them to it. Right. So, because I felt that if they don't learn the discipline of follow through the discipline of your word is law, 
then I'm not arming them properly for success and future confidence in life, right? Right. So I've had to learn how to breathe, stay centered, and and uh, I guess be more smooth in my approach of <laughs> of let of of letting them know, hey, look, you didn't finish this. This is something that you need to take care of, you know. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, Satyan, why don't you tell the world, I mean, we talked a little about fatherhood, and, and we really combine leadership and fatherhood in this in this podcast. I'm a big believer that uh, great leaders and great fathers go hand in hand. Um, I look at the leadership as not so much as your title, just like fatherhood, not so much as your title, but more yeah. about your influence, how your actions influence those around you, those you lead, and as well as your children. So why don't you catch us up on what's what's new, exciting in your world, what your business is about, and uh, how you're showing up and, and doing all that great stuff in the world and helping people. Well, my organization is called Warrior Sage, and I train leaders, thought leaders, People are in helping professions, business leaders, entrepreneurs, uh, healthcare professionals I have, like doctors, physicians, therapists. I train them in psycho-spiritual methods, techniques, processes, which they can implement in their own life, implement in their clients' lives, which really raise the bar, help people go through obstacles, problems, really in record time. At the very core level, they achieve success, you know? So... Mm -hmm. Um, I have a leadership training that I do for leaders who are really ready to go to their level of their highest destiny, what their deepest calling is about in life. And so I, I take them through a very powerful process retreat where they bond with other uh, kick-ass entrepreneurs, leaders who have higher meaning, you know, not just take hey, more success, but ones who have a yearning for living with higher meaning and making a deeper contribution on the planet. So I take them away and my wife and I, we, we go through very powerful processes. We don't give away what we do. It's like a mysterious retreat um, that we have leaders come all over the world from, but we really take them through a way to maximize, get them to their top level of achievement while having a deep state of calm and centeredness in their being. So that's, that's one of our greatest passions to uh, put out in the world. And we try to do that with our kids too. And so far, uh, it's awesome. It's working well at home as well, you know. Great stuff. So as you teach the leadership, uh, like what does leadership mean to you? Leadership means to me, first of all, is discovering, you know, to me there's three stages of leadership. The first stage is me leadership. It's the focus on self-recognition, focus on being seen, it's more egocentric, okay, uh, about power, having power over others. Then there's the second stage of leadership, which is equanimity, balance, you know, um, being at the same level, playing field, equality. That's a step up from the old school, I'm going to, you know, beat you down with a stick type of leadership, right? Mm -hmm. But then there's the third stage, which I call transcendent or enlightened or awakened leadership, awakened leadership. And for me, that's where you recognize that each person is a gem. Each person has a profound gift, a destiny, has a, has a, has a heart, has a soul, has a life. And my job as a leader is to, is to relinquish my ego and be of service to uplifting them. What would make their life profound? What would make my teammates' life happy? What would make their soul feel, oh, I'm on the right track of life? My job as a leader is to help them achieve that, help them live that. So rather than being at the top of the pyramid and everyone else is below, I believe the pyramid really is upside down with the point at the bottom and that the greatest leaders are servants, are, are here to evoke the greatest in everyone else. So that's what I try to be and, and intend to be for those I get to have the privilege of serving, you know? Yes, indeed. Servant leadership. I want to transition into leadership as influence. Can you share a time when you realize if you look back in, in your child's lives or even, you know, in your community 
when you look back and you realize that your actions had a huge impact, um, first on your children and then maybe in your community as you've been building um, the Warrior Sage? Yeah. Well, can you repeat that again, my friend? Yeah, so she, there's no fatherhood playbook out here, right? So I, we look back and share a time that we realize that our actions, like that, you know, oftentimes our children are watching what we're doing. So can you look back at a time in your life when you were raising your children when you realize you may not have realized at the time, but then became aware of how powerful your actions were on their life, the impact you've had on your children? Yeah, totally. You know, I um I want to I want to share a story with you, two story, little brief ones. Cool. And it was, you know, I'm Indian background, and my parents took me to see this uh, guru that was visiting, and 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 you know, I had my young kids there, and they were they were young at the time, and I was listening to this lecture of this teacher. Right, it sounded very interesting, talking about meditation and all of that. Right, so there was this there were these boys that were having a lot of fun in the temple and climbing up stuff and cl doing stuff that supposedly you shouldn't do in a holy space, right? A religious space, right? And one boy was climbing up and he couldn't fall and then hurt himself if he fell, right? And so the parents were complaining and the guru stopped the parents and he says, and they said, well, he shouldn't be there. And the guru said this, he said, listen, if the kid falls and breaks his bones, that can be mended. But a broken spirit that's really hard to mend. Oof. I love it. Love it. You know, and then subsequent to that, my grandma, Suzanne's grandma, right? Like my grandma, she said, Satyan, the way, you know, what will really help you raise kids? And she put out her hand and she said, imagine you went to the beach and you had sand in your hand. She goes, if you squeeze your hand too tight and you got to walk a mile to get the sand somewhere in your hand, if you squeeze too tight, the sand's going to fall through the fingers. And and if you open your hand too loosely, the sand is going to fall through your fingers. Keep your hand in a way that the sand stays there. And it just hit me so hard that that's, she, she was sharing with me how to raise my children, not to squeeze too tight so that they squeeze, squeeze through my fingertips, you know, from excessive discipline, excessive strictness, or not to be so loose that they fall through the fingers, but hold them with love, hold them with strength, hold them with compassion. And those two teachings, that one, that it's better to let your kid break some bones than to break their spirit and to hold your hand in a way so you're not over squeezing or over loose. Those, those two visuals have guided me in my life so profoundly in raising my kids. And I try to stay in that equilibrium with them and for, since then i when i feel myself getting too tight you know like too angry or, or too controlling i breathe i relax and my kids feel it because when i get tight they do more of the opposite of what i don't want <laughs> right right <laughs> <laughs> right Absolutely. so i try to find that equilibrium space and from there is when I find that I'm my functioning, my craft, my intuition, and my connection, my benevolence. Um, and I say the right thing then, rather than I'm too loose or too too tight. I, I come from the right place, you know? Absolutely. And what do you think, when, what, do you have like a routine each day that you wake up with? Like what does the first 60 minutes of your day look like? I know you have a lot of, you know, you have a business, you have a wife and, and children, you are integrating this home life and, and work life. Uh, do you have a routine every, in the first 60 minutes of your day that you stick by or is it something yeah. different every day? It, it's, it, it changes in some ways, but the basic essence is when I get up, the first thing that I do is, you know, I give gratitude, you know, I give gratitude. I look for what's going well in my life. And I, and then the next thing I do is I look at my four, my F's, my family, my faith, my finance and my fitness with the fun I have. And I do a little visualization. I do a little imagination exercise where I fear, where I say, I go through, what do I feel like? What's the feelings I want with my family today? What do I want to experience with my family today? Uh, what type of connection? I may not have the details in my visualization. Sometimes it's more of a feeling. Mm -hmm. But I, 
I, I set the code. I set the intention for the day with my family, with my faith. For me, faith is is my belief in myself, my belief in spirit, my belief in uh, the cosmos, you know? And, and I set my relationship with that for the day. And then I do the same with my finances. I look at my f- earning, saving, spending, and investing, and I look at where do I want to put more attention on today for that? And then with my fitness, I make an intention of, okay, what I want, um, not the details of what I want to eat, but whatever I feel about it. I want to have a little bit more energy today. I want to have more relaxation. So I go through this in the first hour, and then I like to stretch, or I like to go into a hot tub, or I like to do a little bit of um, movement, get the creakiness out of my bones. But the essence of all of it is just connection to my four Fs, visualizing, feeling those in the highest way that I would like to live them, and then just letting that unfold into the day. What a great way to start the day. I have uh, something that I do called the power hour that's similar. It's getting centered and always starting with gratitude. I can't un- uh, stress enough, or not even stress, um, highlight enough how much gratitude uh, is important to start your day. I-, I go through seven minutes before I even leave the bed of-, of gratitude going through it in my head, and then I write something down. Um, so I love that. I love that. Awesome. Awesome, bro. Satyan, um, what is one tool or tip that you think all fathers should know? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it, the biggest tool for me, it's a mindset attitude, and I call it lowering importance. Mm. Lowering importance. It's a paradoxical principle. And lowering importance is, is that when I feel like I'm getting riled up around something, my family, my teens, my wife, my business, anything, when I feel like I'm getting riled up, worked up, tense up, I've come to recognize that stress, anxiety, tension. I mean, I could do all the yoga, breathing. I could do you know all the rituals to try to reduce the stress, right? But at the core, stress, the reason for stress, any stress, is because I've attributed too much importance to something. I've put excess amounts of importance on some topic, which I'm not getting the way I want, so I'm getting stressed about it, right? So what I do is I find inside myself, what am I stressed about? And then I ask myself, how much importance have I attributed to this topic coming out in any certain way that I want? And then when I find that the root of my stress is the amount of importance I'm putting on something, I lower the importance. I just dial it back. I go, oh, it's not it's so important. I need to relax the importance on this. Become more detached, more distant from the thing that I found so important. And that automatically reduces my stress. And it really reduces the grip, you know, that tight, tight grip that I shared with you that makes the sand go through. Mm-hmm. And then paradoxically, What happens is by lowering the importance, the very thing that I wanted to happen comes to me with much more ease. It's a metaphysical, spiritual principle that I've discovered through my mentors. And I got to tell you, it's it works deeply and it allows me to go through my day in a way that I get to have a smile and keep my tension, my importance at check. Because ultimately, the most important things aren't the ones that I think they are coming up in the day, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. You actually helped me out today. Because <laughs> I had an interesting morning. I, I just lowered the importance in my head, and I'm feeling better already, my brother. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so it's good. Uh, no coincidences. Um, so let's look at Do you have one book you'd recommend to our listeners? We like to give them some resources if there's something that sticks out recently that you read or, or over the years that you really is a go-to book. What would be one book you'd like to recommend oh, to our man, listeners? The go-to book for fathers and men who are in relationship is number one, and this is a book by one of my mentors, David Dada is the author, D-A-V-I-D, last name is D-E-I-D-A, David Dada, and the book is called the way of the superior man. Okay. I'll That's a that must. The, show notes. the way of the superior man. It's my favorite. I My book is used up. 
and I've probably given up. I've probably given away a hundred in my life. So uh, I highly recommend that. How to deal with the challenges of women, life, work, life and death, purpose, mission, all of that. You know. Great stuff. Okay. So we're going to go to the overflow. This is our last segment of the show. And I have two questions. The first is, you know, you already gave us a tool and a tip. um, But if you have any advice for for our listeners out there, the fathers out there, maybe something that you've taught in your leadership trainings or just learned along the way as a father, what would what would be a one piece of advice out there? Hmm. Well, you know, I want to reemphasize the lowering of the importance. Yeah, I love that. I want to reemphasize the metaphysics involved the, the, are, are so powerful. It sounds like, a, yeah, okay, just lower the importance. But what happens is the stress levels go down, the cortisol levels go down. What happens is that when I'm lowering the importance, I, I approach my children I approach my teammates with a type of inner calmness like um, that comes from the sage within myself. I believe there's the warrior that we need, which is that get shit done, make things happen, be a person of discipline, be a person of integrity and impeccability. That's the warrior, right, inside of us. And the sage, S-A-G-E, that's the wisdom within us, the lightness, the joyfulness, the... Part of us that's transcendent, that knows that, hey, life and death are going to come and go. I might as well make the biggest impact and be a good person, right? Contribute. So to me, the sage is the lowering of the importance. And it took me years to get this. But now that I really aim to have that in my life, everything has sped up. Everything that I've wanted has come to me. And there's more peace in my life and in my family's life than I've ever had by really disciplining myself to keep my um, importances low and keep valuing love and freedom in my heart as the highest, you know? Absolutely. So the last question is the one that, you know, most fathers tune in and, and love this question. It's about your legacy. When your children look back and think of what they have received from you, uh, what would you like your legacy to have been or to be? It's a great, very powerful questions you've been asking today, Devin. Very Thank powerful. You. <laughs> um, the legacy I would love to leave is I want them to know, I want my children to feel that I armed them, armed them with the self-resourcefulness, self-resourcefulness that they needed to create their own Fs, their faith, family, finance, fitness, according to their own tune, according to their own style. But I feel that would be the legacy that would be the highest for me to leave, is that I armed, equipped, and prepared them to be able to um, create their own self-resourcefulness in life. And there it is. Great stuff and a great interview, Satyan. And before we leave, I want to just leave it open to you. If there's something you want to tell our audience members, and of course, I'd like to leave it on you um, first to say thank you, and then let us know the best way we can find you. Certainly. Well, I'm, first of all, I'm grateful for you having me on. I really dig your energy, and and I'm really grateful for your mission that you're sharing here right now because fatherhood and leadership – uh, it, it's it's the crux for us as men uh, to to take into our heart. So what I want to share is this, gentlemen. Let's you know listen to this. Listen to Devon's you know uh, podcast. Really, let's make ourselves the best men we can be for, on this planet right now. It's needed. It's called for. So that's my challenge and my invitation for all of us as brothers, as fathers, as leaders, to make even a greater resolve to live what we can live in life. And, you know, if you feel I can serve you anyway and you want to know more about what I'm up to and uh, our private community and the teachings that my wife and I give, then just come to warriorsage.com, warriorsage.com. Get on our invitation list for our online and live events and – Love to share more about the journey of the Warrior Sage with you guys. 
All right. right. Well, there you have it. Thanks again, Satyan. And I want to thank everybody for tuning in for this week's Fatherhood is Leadership podcast. Uh, You can check out all the great information and some of the show notes. And you can find out where to find Satyan in the show notes as well. And I'm going to tune off for this week and remind people that fatherhood is leadership and leadership is influence. See you soon.